this is Startup a Storefront. Carla Esparza is a two-time UFC women's strawweight champion and became the current title holder when she defeated Rose Namajunas. Typically, a fighter's career only lasts a couple of years, and when they have a huge win, they have to make the money stretch until their next fight. Their pay is not consistent, and after one fight, their career could be completely over. Competitors in the UFC are also required to become ultimate entrepreneurs, as their longevity is directly tied to their audience. In this episode, we will discuss what it's like winning the ultimate fighter, her mindset going into the ring, and how it felt walking down the aisle on her wedding day wearing her UFC title belt. All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to the champ, Carlos Esparza. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. The Cookie Monster is in the building. Thanks so much for having me. When did you first start? Like, what was the thing that got you into mixed martial arts, fighting? What was it? Well, I started wrestling on the boys team in high school and it just kind of like was by chance. Um, I was lifting weights and I'd always been really strong for my size. And one of the football players was like, you're so strong for your size. I'm like five foot nothing. He's like, you should try wrestling. And I'm like, what is that? Okay, let me go give it a shot and just kind of fell in love with it. Yeah. And then at what moment are you like, okay, look, I'm a really good wrestler. Are you, are you destroying men? Is that the thing? Like you're just like crushing everybody, all the women, all the men. Was there no women's team? I'm guessing. Is that? There definitely wasn't a women's team at the time. I mean, it was, it was growing really fast at the time, but it was, you know, if you were a girl wrestling in the area, you know, you were like one or two of a whole team. If, if a team even had a girl and then you go to a tournament and everybody's like the girls wrestling, you know, and circling around you and watching your match. Got it. But at what, at what point are you like, you know, you're good at this. So there's one thing where interest becomes, Oh wow. This is like not so much a career, but I'm very, very good at this. And now I got to take it more seriously. And maybe I originally thought. So, I, I mean, I started wrestling and I was always good for a girl and, don't get me wrong. I beat a lot of guys. Does that bother you when people say that? Uh, not not necessarily. I mean, it just kind of depends what you're talking about. Um, it's like, you you know, my trainer is always like, you're not a strong girl. You're a strong human. Like, you're a strong person. And I always loved that he said that. But for me, I just kind of like let these things fly by. Like, whatever. They can say what they want. It's still a compliment. You know, um, and at, at the time, you know, you know it, it was so rare to be a girl doing it. You didn't really, like, have much to compare it to. Um, but, uh, I definitely felt that I was good and I was beating guys. Like some guys I would, I'd win and lose. The first time I felt that I was really good was, um, when I went to my first girls tournament, I actually got to compete with other females and I went and I crushed it. I think I like pinned everyone and I got like maybe first or second place and wow. nobody went with me to this tournament. You know, my coaches like were family? like, if okay. you want to go, you know, go. So I didn't have a coach. I just kind of went, my mom took me to this tournament, you know, cause the coaches were coaching the guys at a tournament. So, but it was just, you know, it was something I wanted to do. I took a chance and it, you know, it led me here. How far into now. your wrestling career was that, that moment of realization? Um, so I started wrestling my junior in high school and I think that happened kind of mid season or something, um, in, in my junior year. Oh, so pretty early on. Yeah. And I mean, I was like, I was naturally pretty gifted. So the sport of wrestling didn't come easy to me because it doesn't come easy to anyone. You know, yeah. I think it's constantly ra ranked the toughest sport on the planet. Um, yeah. But, you know, I definitely, um, I was always really strong and it did come with somewhat natural for me. So, um, you know, it, it, I just kind of fell in love with it and I was strong at it. And um, yeah, it all went well. I think I went uh, to nationals my first year and I took like 10th at girls nationals. So. Wow. Yeah. And at the time, so it's like, it's also this weird, like, at least from my perspective, right? So for me, you have like WWE and then you have like the Olympics and people like Very in college, different styles. right? But there, and yeah. then it was boxing. And so at the same time, you have this like emerging sport, UFC, Dana's trying to get this thing off the ground. They're doing TV shows, which you were on. And so, yeah. but the intersection of this was like very much in line with your career, which seems crazy. Like, do you, do you ever think about how crazy that seems that everything intersected almost at the right time? It almost feels like stars just kind of aligned with everything totally. because when I started fighting, I've been fighting professionally for 12 and a half years. So at the time there wasn't many opportunities for women, let alone in the UFC. So it was just kind of like, this is fun. I love doing this. Let me just do it until I can't do it anymore. You know, it's not like there was any money in it. I, was, I think I made $800 in my first fight. I paid $850 for to medicals. Oh, wow. Okay. So, you know, it was just kind of a career of passion at the time. But like you said, stars kind of aligned. Yeah. And it came to a point where I kept with it. And it was now it's something that I can make a good living at. Yeah. 
explain to me how you got on UFC Fighter. What did that look like? How did that happen? Well, for the Ultimate Fighter, I actually Ultimate Fighter, yeah. got uh, I got a call from Dana White. Um, I was already the Invicta FC champion at the time, which was the top organization for women at the time before women were allowed in the UFC. And, you know, I had just gotten off a fight or I was supposed to fight, but my opponent like didn't make weight or something. And, um, you know, I was kind of bummed and I was like, you know, this sucks. And then, um, I'm at the gym the next week and I get a call from a 702 number, Las Vegas. And I'm like, who is this? You know, I pick up the phone. Hey, Carla, this is Dana White. I just wanted to welcome you to the UFC. You're going to be on the ultimate fighter. I'm just in shock. I'm like, is this, is this really happening yeah. right now? First question is, are you really Dana? Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, at the time, like I said, you know, women weren't really in the UFC. Ronda Rousey had kind of started that, but, you know, that was still fairly fresh. Yeah. And so then you get on the show, and then what is this actually like? Like, does it feel like you're very much part of a startup in some way? I would say, it, I mean, you know that you're making history at the time because okay. so they'd uh, never done anything like this, had all an all women's squad. And is that scary or is that like, okay, cool, we're making history, let's go, we're going to do this? Or is it like, oh, uh, because at the same time, you're kind of like a guinea pig. I, I mean, or did it a, not feel you're like so that? focused on your goal, which was the belt, because they didn't have a women's division this di- this season was the first time that they crowned a champion from the ultimate fighter, which normally this show is a show trying to kind of like get, you know, people a contract in the UFC, like a lower tier contract. So these are like lower level guys. Like I'm trying to get my chance to fight for the UFC. Yeah. Um, but this was like already girls that were established in the division top girls. So you're just like so focused mm. on, you know, winning at the time. Yeah. But did it feel like MTV road rules or like, did it, was it, was it like, they don't give you alcohol, do they? No. Yeah. Oh they yeah. Do. There's a full bar there. You can <laughs> order anything you want and it's just like, have at it. You know, they've had seasons of the ultimate fighter where people have gotten wasted and kind of made a fool of themselves. And that was definitely one of the thing my manager like pressed to me and his other female fighter Felice was like, do not go on that show and get wasted. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't become a reality star, become a UFC star. Exactly. Right. Exactly. I just like my palms start sweating hearing about all this. I'm like, oh no. Does, does your family ever call like Carla? Please. Carla, <laughs> come on. I chill out. I'm it's, tired of the I'm tired of watching you. Yeah. It's it been like almost dark. 20 oh, years. I geez. think they're like they're used, used to it by it? now. <laughs> oh my God. Is Matthew used to it? Matthew, congratulations. New hobby. Is he used to it? I don't think so. No, I. Yeah, it, yeah. it would be hard to watch if, if yeah, if you knew the person. If you knew the person, yeah. So yeah. We, we belong to this tennis club, and some people there are like actors, and so we like now when I watch these television shows, they're on it, and I I can't watch it because you don't believe them as the character they're playing. Not at yeah. all. I'm like, no. Yeah. I'm like, I know this guy. I played with this guy. I'm like, no. And I'll send him videos being like, dude, you were looking chubby back then. Or like, I'll just make fun of them, and it's funny. But then I can't watch a show. Right. And so with this, yeah. it's like it's like too close. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's like oh. no, it's crazy because even me, who's been doing combat sports for almost twenty years, I'm like, I see my my close friends fighting, and I know, I know, I train with them every day, and like, I know what it takes, I know what they can take, but still, like, you get like my stomach goes in knots, I get like my whole, I feel through my whole body, and you know, Matt, who my my husband, my new husband, who's like a doctor, and like you know, never really hardly watched fighting before, you know, and he's just kind of like, oh my gosh, and the first fight that he's ever gone to of mine live because of COVID has been this last one where I'm fighting for the title, the big one. So there's so much pressure, there's so much media. Like he's getting interviewed by like ESPN, they're coming to the house, and this promotion and that, this newspaper and whatever, and he's he's kind of just thrown in the mix. You know, it's kind of hard to go from like nothing he i think he has like 200 couple hundred followers on his social media like he's not really like into that kind of stuff but you know because he's used to speaking in front of his company a lot like i think he he's he's good with the interviews but like as far as being at the fight i think he's just he's losing his went, mind losing his mind yeah, <laughs> yeah that's i would be too i would be, to say I would be like i'm gonna yeah. stare at you you're gonna stare at me and we're not gonna watch yeah. don't look this way don't look at the screen so yeah. look at, look at the it's like Billy Bean pacing back and forth in the clubhouse because oh. he couldn't watch the game. He was yeah. too close to it. Yeah, and especially like, I mean, let's be honest, like I'm sure watching a female get in there and like get punched is a little bit harder than watching a male. So I like every, oh. everything me, on top of it. For me, I'm like, oh no. Just like, anyone getting beat. I think I both of them yeah. would be hard. Oh. But you know, there's just like this 
cultural thing with like women and you know like they're not a, they're like softer and not as <laughs> aggressive you know <laughs> which is the obviously ring. not the case <laughs> yeah. but like meet my wife you know yeah, for him did. who's not been so involved on, on right. that scene it's kind of like oh my gosh you know like but he handled it well and you know <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I was able to win for him so that he didn't won. get all freaked Big out win. yeah huge win huge win huge. after eight years like to come back and get and regain the title yeah made some records That's got fucked yeah. home with the bell yeah, it was pretty cool. Now, what do you what do you do when like so you you have that moment and and you're what you're is that on cloud like nine. Start? Let's start. Yeah. Let's start the build. So that that day, what do you are you are you sleeping? Can you sleep? Oh yeah. Oh, I slept. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I slept in. So you know before the before the fight, you have a weigh in, mm-hmm. and because is that the day of or the day before the day before. Okay. So like the fight is Saturday, and you weigh in Friday in the morning from nine to eleven. Okay. And then that the night before that, you're not sleeping because you're so dehydrated. You're cutting mm, weight. Yeah. You know, you're depriving yourself of liquids. You're just like, oh, like I'm miserable right now. We'll be right back to the episode after this quick break. Warby Parker offers everything you need for happier eyes, and you can shop with them online or in stores. Check out Warby Parker's home try-on program for yourself. Order five pairs of glasses to try at home for free. It ships free to you and includes a prepaid return shipping label. Try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash ship it. This episode is also brought to you by Fight Camp. They offer thousands of classes with new workouts added each week, so you'll always find something new. You can get a killer workout done in as little as 20 minutes. And don't worry if you don't have any boxing experience, because Fight Camp has your back. They've created programs specifically designed to teach you the basics of boxing and kickboxing, so you can build a strong foundation. Fight Camp even comes with all the gear you need to start boxing from home, including a freestanding punching bag, boxing gloves, quick hand wraps, and smart punch trackers that provide real-time data during your workout. So head on over to joinfightcamp.com slash startup to storefront and get free shipping with your first order. Now, back to the episode. Do you visualize at all in in the uh, pre-match hours, like leading up into it? Yeah, I I definitely do. I didn't used to. Um, So like there's always room to improve and things to like learn in the sport, whether it's nutrition, your training, your mental, your mental. And for me, like the mental was something that I kind of shifted maybe like five, five years back or something when I I had come off to my first time in my career losing two in a row. And I was like, dude, like, this isn't cool. Like, did you think I need, it was over or did you know? No, I, mean, I didn't think it was over. I knew it wasn't over, but it yeah. was just like, I need to make some adjustments. Like this okay. isn't working. Okay. Like something needs to change. I made a lot of changes, but one of the big changes I made was my mental. And, you know, I never used to pay attention mm. to my thoughts, but uh, upon that like change and I, my, I did some reading. It was like, dude, I'm thinking negative. all I'm like, this person's going to beat me. And Mm. they're like, I'm going to go against them. They're so much better. What if I can't do this? What if I can't do that? And I was like, nah, like I'm, I, I became like, I changed my thinking. I was like, I got this. I started visualizing, you know, just really going through the process of like how I'm going to win. Like one book I read was just like, visualize like what you're going to do. Like, you know, if you want to get married, like don't sleep on one side of your bed, like, or in the middle of your bed, leave room for your, yeah. if you, if you want this brand new car, leave oh, room wow. in your garage. Cause that car is going to be in that spot. Like, and wow. at our gym, I have this trophy case for my UFC bell, my Invicta bell. It is. And I was like, this empty spot right here, I kept visualizing my new UFC belt. I was like, this is where it's going. Oof. And I kept looking at that. Like, you know, every week I would stare at that when we would watch footage and I'd be like, this is where my belt's going. And I kept thinking that. And before the fight, I, you know, ran through my scenario. Of how it's going to go. Yeah. That's amazing. It's, it's incredible to think about. Cause like when I, I was a swimmer and I am not competing so much against the people next to me as I am against the clock. I know when I walk into the pool that it's going to be the same distance, the setup's going to be the same more or less. And so I, I could visualize my race to uh, like a 10th of what I would end up going. And I could inv- uh, visualize the amount of strokes I was going to take, the amount of dolphin kicks off the walls. But with, with fighting, you 
you can't really do that because your opponent's going to throw something that you're not expecting and you have to adapt in the moment. So I was curious about what you're actually visualizing. When, when you have that empty trophy case, are you just envisioning the belt in there or are you also visualizing the fight itself? I would just envision, I, I even took a picture of it like the day before I, like my last day training at the gym, I took a picture of it so I could like look at it and be like, that's where my belt is going. And when I would look at the case, I'd be like, that's where my belt's going. Sometimes I would picture my hand raised and I've had my hand raised like many times. So sometimes I'd even look at a picture. I'm like, I'm just like going through that feeling again of like when I did have that success, I was like, that's how it's going to feel. Sometimes I would even like be in bed and I'd be like, yes, like I, I even got chills in my body just raising my hands right now, like feeling that. That's but awesome. Yeah, that's what's up. The visualization I did before the fight, like you said, anything could happen, but it's not about anything. They can throw anything about me. It's about me imposing my will, me pushing the fight where I want to go. You know, so it wasn't about them. It was about me. So and you're like, so locked in, like you're from the future. You know what it looks like. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. I went through a couple different scenarios. I'm like, okay, like I don't get the first one. I got to keep moving. Right, right, I got to right. do this and I got to do that. Time. Maybe I went through two or three scenarios, but I did go through scenarios and all of them had me with my hand raised, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I know that's kind of was that's my vis visualization process. Well, how about for, for after the fight? So like, you know, your hand gets raised and then, and then I imagine like the recovery process is, is somewhat lengthy because you did just go through a fight and you probably don't go through, you know, all of that turmoil on your body in training. You know, when you spar in training, I'm sure like you're not trying to get beat to, to hell because it does take a while to recover. And so like for, for you, how long after a fight until you feel or start to feel like a hundred percent again? Every fight is different. Every fight is different. Like you never know what injuries you're going to get from the fight. I train very smart for me training a huge part of my longevity, which that's been one of the things I'm most proud of because not a lot of people can perform at this level. Like I've been in the top 10 for 11 years of this, you know, maybe the top five even, you know, I've always been at the top and, you know, the longevity for me, a huge part of that has been maintaining my health you know, being foam rolling, stretching, warming up, doing all these things, getting massage, like recovery, body work done, um, you know, just making, and not only that, but when I'm in training, choosing my partners, like who's, who do I trust? Who's going to keep me safe? Not like, oh, this guy has, I'm going to jump with this new guy and he has an ego. He wants to beat me up because I'm a UFC fighter and, but I'm, and maybe I'm strong, but I'm also 40 pounds heavier or lighter than him and I'm, I get hurt. So you know, just like all these things are really important for the longevity of it for me. What's the business side of it like? Like, does Dana say, hey, look, we got this fight for you in a couple of years? Uh, or or does, do, do some things have to happen for like a new emerging person to come in and and basically go after your title? How does how does that work? Like how far in advance will you will you know that? OK, I got to fight or potentially so, fight. You know, this weekend, actually, there so Dana White just, you know, said like this fight that's happening is the number one contender fight. So in Singapore right now, they're having a fight that's like the winner of this fight gets the title fight. So basically fighting me. And then it's like, I don't know if anyone's going to get hurt from that fight. Like, you don't know what's going to happen because right. like I said, every fight's different. Like I even, you know, back to what you said earlier, I did a jujitsu match and, you know, for New Year's. You know, I was like, oh, I'm just easy jujitsu match. Oh, they yeah. made, yeah. you know, whatever. And I got split. My eye got split oh, open to the bone. I was invited to that. I was going to go. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. And I had like had to, you know, jump on the plane and, you know, within 24 hours and have a plastic surgery uh, in surgeon in uh, OC. Like there was like they had to sew underneath the layer, the muscle and on top. And then it's like, OK. But then in this fight, I had like no injuries. I actually had some, no, hardly any, you know, a couple of nagging things, but. It's like, I'm fine. But, you know, you never know with a fight. You could tear You could tear something. Like, it just depends. Every fight is different. Yeah. From a business perspective, though, just for you, like, how are you thinking about, so you win a fight, you have a lot of people knocking at your door for endorsements. Like, what is the thing that you're, like, annoyed by maybe, but also it's also an opportunity, right? It's a real opportunity to make more money or to have some income. Um, I wish the door was, like, knocking more for endorsements. Um. This sport like is so saturated, so big now. There are so many fighters and everyone wants, you know, these opportunities. And, um, you know, we kind of like leave that to our managers a lot. They kind of deal with the sponsorships a lot. Um, but like I said, when, Reba when you know, the UFC decided to make it a uniform thing, we can't 
wear their stuff out to the cage. It kind of made it, you know, less appealing for companies, you know, because they're not feeling a part of, you know, your journey as much. It's basically just social media based. So, you know, don't be wrong. There are some great opportunities that come up where you're just like, what? Like I get paid this much money for this and it's awesome. But, you know, it's not it's definitely not a reliable source of income that you can just count on. Neither is fighting. I mean, yeah. like I said, injuries and Anything this and could that. Happen. Yeah. Is that yeah. a big thing in your mind when you're entering the fight too? It's like the potential payday or does that not, does that not really matter? Cause you're so locked in on the fight. Not, not on the day of the fight. I mean, that's in contract negotiation time. Okay. You know, your manager, you know, books, you know, gets you a new contract when it's time to re up and you're just like, okay, you know, what am I trying to get? And, but the Got thing it. is most fighters are fighting for a fight and a win bonus, which is right, basically you right. can walk home with half the amount or like double, uh, double that. Right. So I'm sure every fighter goes in. How, and do then, you, how do you look at that? Are you like, I'm going to get the purse plus some, or are you thinking this is, this is my worst case? Every fighter, like, so you got to plan for the worst. Like you even got to plan for no money because fight camps are so intensive that people get injured a lot. So you might not even make it to the fight. So it's like I said, being careful is such a huge part of the sport. Um, but yeah, I mean, definitely like you go into there thinking like, okay, I got a plan for the, you know, making half that amount of money and what's my year going to look like? Could I get injured from the fight and be out for a year? It's like, you almost got to like, you're getting this big, big payday potentially in one day. And then you kind of, kind of got to like plan for like not having any money for a long time. But then again, you could fight again in a couple months. So you don't know. So you have to be like a little bit more careful. It's not like you know, you're a lawyer or a doctor where, you know, you kind of have this, have this right, salary steady, where you're, you you yeah. know, you're going to get paid for years till you're 60. It's like, we only have a short career too. So yeah. some people are done fighting by the time they're in their early thirties. Yeah. So it's like the ultimate entrepreneurship. I want to <laughs> circle back to, to something you see, yeah. not the UFC. <laughs> That's crazy. You, you talked about, um, fighters have to be marketable, you know, in order to like, ensure that they stay in the UFC. And I'm curious about your personal approach to that. And if you lean heavily into um, one aspect of social media or, or like what your individual approach is to staying marketable and, and like a, you know, a constant presence in people's minds and feeds. You know, that's hard because it's, there's, there, there's these constant, you know, ever evolving changes. There's a new, okay. It was like, now there's you know, Facebook, now there's Twitter. Okay. Instagram is a thing. Now it's TikTok, and you got to constantly be up on it. And do you do it yourself you know? or do you have, or does your manager I do it myself. have a team? Okay. I do it myself. Sometimes my manager will kind of make certain things for me, but not like super often. Um, but you kind of got to stay up on it. And I definitely used to be more like heavily social media because there wasn't opportunities as much. So it was like, oh my gosh, I need to get sponsors. I need to, you know, make sure that people care about me as a fighter. Cause it's not like you're on an NFL team where you're like, you're just a part of like the brand is the team. Yeah. Not to say like there aren't stars on the team, but if you're, you're just like, yeah, I'm on this team, but somebody might not know like every athlete on that team. Right. Whereas fighter, you have to make people care about your story. So I, you know, I used to be like super involved with post posting my social media all the time. Not so much in the last year. I feel like I'm getting older and like these kids are coming up with like these constant new trends and it's hard to like. The reels are everything now. These videos. The reels. Yeah. So I feel like Instagram, they're so good at keeping up with trends. That's everything. That they are now becoming gearing more towards like this TikTok-esque. It's hundred percent true. You know, and it's like, but I remember back in the day there was Snapchat and I was on that. Mm -hmm. Or not Snapchat. Um, what was the other one? Vine. Vine. Yeah. Yeah. I even made a funny video of like, well, now we're bringing Vine. You know, like I made a funny video because it's like, well, they have these videos. Now we're making our videos. Like they're just (laughs) make like they're constantly like up on the new things and not letting anybody kind of gain too much momentum. And feel like like I said, now it's turning to TikTok, and I'm like, what do I do if you post pictures? Yeah. Now I I realize like the trend (laughs) is lower on the views and the likes and stuff. So it's kind of like, dude, you've got to get with this new TikTok thing. These voiceovers and these like clip, 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 clip. And it's like, oh my gosh, I got to learn something else. But they're like, so good. They can like engineer <laughs> views now based on the trends. They're like, yeah, this is the trend. And so watch this. We're going to just post it. this and they're going to, they're going to push it, you to the front. And you like, see it, you see it. And you're like, wow, like yeah. you can really kind of make your way into the algorithm. Yeah. Algorithm. It's yeah. Not that, it's like, huge. It's, and 
it's the kids that are not the kids, but you know, you guys that are so you kiddos. You own it. <laughs> Do you have a way to decompress from it all? Like, are you like, okay, once the chaos is over, I'm going to go home and you have like X, Y, no, no. Cause I had a it wedding, just, like literally one week later. Which was crazy, and, by and the way. And you wore your belt to it. Yeah. I mean, I, every interviewer kept asking me, are you going to wear your belt down the aisle? I mean, I, I had Matthew, to at that like, point. If she loses, what, what do you, what happened? Like, how is the wedding impacted? Yeah, I mean, it, it could have been impacted. I mean, I could have been injured could have walking been injured. down. You, 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 I could yeah. have been walking down in crutches. Your wedding photos could have taken a very different. Vibe. I could have, you know, had a scar. Was that in the back of your mind? Open. Pre-fight? Or are you like I'm not pre-fight? I mean, you, know, you do what you have to win, like at all costs, you know, or else I wouldn't take. That, the was it extra motivation? Were you like, I'm getting married? No, I gotta look not good. really. No, <laughs> I mean, it was definitely something I wanted, but it wasn't like it didn't change my mentality That's in the amazing. fight because it's like you can't hold back in a fight because, oh my God, I got to look pretty in my pictures. We'll do the pictures again later. Like, <laughs> yeah. who cares? Like, I got to win. That's smart. You know, you got to do what you got to do. Did you so, buy anything? Were you like, I'm going to go buy this. This is the thing. I'm going to buy like, this. Like, treat myself? Yeah, you treat you yourself You know, normally nice, I treat win. myself after every fight, like with something, even if it's something for my house. Like, I bought a new AC one time, you know, whatever. But this fight, I haven't treated myself. But, you know, I'm, we're in talks of getting a new house too and, I might go on like a little extra vacation with my girlfriend, but you should for yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, I definitely like to treat myself, but I haven't, I haven't gone for it yet. <laughs> Dude, what a legend. That's the craziest shit. I love your mindset. Honestly, it's like, it's like, uh, I think people, I think you're saying it's so normal to you in terms of like you watch, you look for weaknesses, you improve. But I think like there's a real, the mindset of getting to the point of being able to see your own failures and being what I would call you like mega comfortable in that space. And almost you look at it like that's what's required. That's essential. It's not, you don't even think about it. Right. You don't even, it's like so normal for you to be like, I am so bad at X, Y, Z. Let's go and let's go. Let's, let's, fi let's fix it. I think yeah. that mindset is like so essential to people listening to entrepreneurship, to business, to, to ath to the athletic mind. And it's just like, it's, <laughs> but you say, I just love it. I love it because to you, it's, it's, uh, you don't talk about it because it's so, it's so part of it that yeah. there's no reason to talk about it. It's like, yeah, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you do that? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I love that. Well, listen, tell everyone where they can follow you or when, when your next fight is, yeah. you're going you're gonna to put Owen in a headlock here in a second. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, on Instagram, Twitter, Carla Sparza one on my Facebook fan page, Carla Sparza. I don't really do my TikTok, but probably Carla Esparza <laughs> MMA or something like that. I'm going to get on it. I need, need some help from you youngsters now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, you guys can follow me there. And uh, I don't know when I'm fighting next, but I'll definitely post it on my social media. Right on. Well, thank you so much for coming today. The champ. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, guys. Hey, you. Yeah, you listening. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the episode. If you just can't get enough, check out our subscription on Apple Podcasts. For only $4.99 a month, you can listen to the full-length, uncut, unedited podcast episodes. We're giving out life-changing advice for less than the price of your morning coffee. What a deal. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, and we cannot wait to see you next week for another great episode. Cheers.